Thank you, Major. Very kind. We'll recognize District 8 tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings you bestow upon us each and every day. This has been a beautiful day, and we thank you for each and every one you give us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve this county. We take it for granted, Lord, and we just ask that you give us a servant's heart, and we lead and we move with, with action that's pleasing to you and our citizens of Putnam County. We thank you so much for that opportunity. We ask that you continue to bless us, Lord. Bless each and every one that's here, and thank you for those that have come out to be with us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, commissioners, uh, Mr. Neighbors, if you would call the roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you will um, take your handsets and press yes for me, that will be great. Just press yes, and it will let, let you stop right there. For those of you who are on the phone, I have your handsets here with me, so I will be asking you your vote as we go through the meeting. So, Mr. Mr. Christopher, are you still with us? Yes. All right, sir. Mr. Randolph, you still with me? Yes. Mr. Sandlin, you still with me? Mr. Sandlin. Yes, I'm still with you. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Chief Holmes, are you still with me, brother? Well, I'm still with you there, brother. <laughs> Excellent. Sound I love to hear. Mr. Chairman, all 24 are present. There is a quorum. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Neighbors. I appreciate that. Item number five uh, is to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second on the agenda. Do any discussion? Favor the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And the motion carries. Item six, approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Favor that motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, no. That motion carries as well. Item seven is unfinished business. And we'll report from standing committees, physical, uh, excuse me, planning. No unfinished business. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, physical review. No unfinished business. And nominating. No unfinished business. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, item B is report of special committees. Uh, any, uh, do we do have a report on the audit committee? Do you want to make that, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The audit committee may let you have the minutes in your packet, and we just need to make those uh, part of the minutes of the county commission meeting. Anyone have any questions? Uh, we will entertain a motion uh, to include them. Is that we do need to vote on that? Motion, right? motion, motion to approve. approve. Yes. Okay. Got a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. second. Now we'll ask for discussion. Are there any questions about the audit? We did have some findings this time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free. I'm sure Mayor Porter will be happy to answer them. Mayor Porter, th those were all correct. Correct. Yes, sir. They were what I would consider to be minor and part of the 2020 of the COVID and tornado and everything was going on. So yeah, they're, they're corrected and we go do our best to go back to clean audit next year. Any other questions on the audit? Favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the motion carries. Insurance committee, any report? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, the insurance committee may at uh, every Three years we have to bid out our health, dental, and vision insurance. Uh, that was done by our insurance broker, Concord Insurance, Sean Bennett. Uh, we started out looking at somewhere around a 20 to 23 percent increase in our health insurance. After the policies were rebid, we came back in at just under 9 percent, uh, which is a huge uh, 
deal compared to what we were looking at. Uh, we've also compared to what it would cost us to go to the state Blue Cross plan, still cheaper than doing that. We're looking at being self-funded. Uh, before it has not been cheaper or near the same, uh, but this year may be a different story. We've got some new uh, information that came in. Uh, the insurance committee didn't have a chance to see the final on that, so we may have another meeting. There may be a possibility that I'll be coming back to you next month to look and show you what it would be like if we were self-insured. Uh, possibility of saving some money and not be at any more risk than what we are. But right now, the insurance committee recommends to the full commission that we accept the Blue Cross uh, bid at just under 9% increase from last year with the plans all staying the same as they were. And that will need to be included in this year's budget. It's going to come out to about 450000 increase over all the budgets, us, road department, library, all the all the other funds, solid waste, parks and recs, all the funds that we have in the county. Compared to most of the uh, private businesses that I've talked to, that's a pretty, that's, we didn't have an increase last year. Uh, so that's uh, having a little less than 9% in two years is, uh, is really good. So um, would need you to approve that, to put it in the budget. But at the same time, we still have the option that come back to you. If you want to look the self-funded, you can. Uh, and if we do do that, you can make that decision next month. It won't have any effect on what you're doing here. So I will entertain a motion. Uh, motion to motion approve. approve. Got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right. So we understand there's a 9% and I'm, I'm going to ask a question. This does not alter at all the employee employer contribution percentage. It is just an increase from the insurance company. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? Any other questions? Yes, sir. If we're going to revisit this next month, self-insured, is there any reason we have to take action tonight? Can we not just wait till next month and make a decision after we see both of them? Well, if I don't, if the self-insured thing doesn't work out, I won't be coming back to you with it next month. So that's that's what we're still looking at. There's still some details to be worked out. So just in case, I'd rather you go ahead and approve this, and then if we do look at something else, we can always change it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? <laughs> Keep forgetting I've got a fit. Any other discussion? Favor the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And that motion carries. Is there any other unfinished business anywhere? We'll move into new business and uh, report of standing committees. Madam Chair for planning. Thank you. All right. Uh, first up, we've got a recommendation. Uh, we recommend approval for EMS to declare a 2013 GMC G4500 as surplus and to sell via internet public auction, and I so move. Second. We've got a motion and second. Any discussion? Favor that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And the motion carries. Next up, uh, recommend approval of the list of vehicles to be sold by Internet Public Auction for the Sheriff's Department, and you've got a list in front of you, and I so move. Second. second. Motion is second. Any discussion on the vehicles? Favor the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And that motion carries. All right, we had a motion that was passed out of planning for this next item. Correct? All right. So the motion was out of planning was to uh, from Mayor Porter to obtain prospects for the Shoney's Hill property and for the county to declare it as surplus property. And I so move. Second. Got a motion and second. Is everybody understanding what this motion's doing? Any discussion? Yes, sir. Buttons not working. I'll change that or not? Oh. You're recognized, uh, Johnson. Okay. I don't have it. Okay. Um, just like with the last one, when we declare the fairground surplus property, do we have any kind of timeline on this? Uh, no, but I would expect uh, in the next 90 days to probably be coming back with something. But it could be shorter than that or it could be a little longer than that. Maybe if you want to put a timeline on it, maybe say six months or something, if you want to, if you need to have we, we gave you till July on the fairgrounds, if I remember correctly. End of July. Yeah. End of July. Okay, so... Um, I think the end of September's. Yeah. That'd be good enough. Sure. I'd like to add that as an amendment. 
give this until the end of September, and then if, if there's no sale or close to sale by the end of September, then we revisit it in October, see if we need to go a different route. I'll second that. So I've got a, actually an amendment to a motion that came out of committee, so we, we are going to have to take it as an amendment. Um, again, because it did come out of committee. So uh, is there any discussion on the minute? He's just asking to put a timeline on it first. Uh, deadline was what? End of September. End of September. Does everybody understand what we're doing? Commissioner Wilson wants to speak. All right, Commissioner Wilson. I've got a question concerning, uh, I was out whenever you were talking about the water tower mm -hmm. on, on that property. We would, the water tower stays and there's a radio tower there too. We would keep that. Okay, is there an easement that's gonna be, okay, so that goes with whoever buys that property will stay. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Anybody else? All right, favor the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Amendment carries. We're back to the original motion as amended. Any discussion on the motion as amended? Favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, no. That motion carries. All right. That completes planning. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll move to item two, which is physical review. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, item A, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval of budget amendments to the County General Fund, and I so move. Second. second. I've got a motion to second. Any discussion on County General? Mr. Neighbors. All right. Let me get up here. Ladies and gentlemen, favor the motion, take your hand, sense, and vote yes. If you do not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote, and it will stop you right there. Mr. Ford. All right, Mr. Sandlin. Yeah. Mr. Randolph. Yes. Mr. Christopher. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? Mr. Chairman, have all 24 voting yes, zero no, zero abstain, zero absent, and the rolls call. That motion carries. Item B, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval of budget amendments to the General Purpose School Fund, and I so move. Second. second. Motion and second on General Purpose School. Any discussion? All right, Mr. All Neighbor. right. Take your handsets. If you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. And the four gentlemen I'll call again on the phone. Mr. Sandlin? Yes. Mr. Randolph? Yes. Mr. Christopher? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman, have all 24 voting yes, zero no, zero absent. The motion roll was called. Motion carries. Thank you. Item C, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval of the request to give the county mayor authority to have a topographic survey done on the Expo Center land. And I so move. Second. second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? There is no expenditure of money here, is there, that we need to vote? Uh, we can vote by voice. Is that correct? Uh, there's expenditure of money, so you need roll call. All right, Mr. Mr. Neighbors. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, two Finish. questions. Yes, One, sir. again, this is for the entire property purchased off the fifth interchange. Yes, sir. And my understanding of this type of a survey, it'll be good from now on out. So whoever we use for architect can use this and go back and develop the plan. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion or questions? 
All right now, Mr. Neighbors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you take your hands, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no, or one please vote. And it will stop you right there. All right, me and on the phone, Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Uh, Mr. Christopher. Yes. Mr. Randolph. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll vote in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? And get this mouse to work. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chair. I'll 24. Votes yes, zero no, motion carried. Item D, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval of the resolution regarding payments in lieu of tax for Highlands Residential Services. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Jones, do we need to do a roll call? I know we don't have to maybe, but do, do, do you? This involves financial. I mean, it's not an expenditure of county by the money, or not expenditure of money by the county, but I think a roll call would be appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So, Mr. Neighbors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take your handsets. You favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. All righty. Mr. Sandling. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Randolph. Yes. Mr. Christopher. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right. All right, Mr. Chairman, you have 22 voting yes, have zero no, zero absent, and two abstain when the roll is called. Motion carries. Item E, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval of the resolution authorizing the county mayor to apply for and administer the litter and trash collecting collection grant with the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation in the amount of 59200 and I so move. Second. Got a motion to second any discussion on the grant. So we can do a voice. Those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Aye. Motion carries. Item F, Fiscal Review Committee recommends approval to allow architects to continue drawings for new jail addition, and I so move. Second. second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Again, are we, is this an expenditure? Do we need a vote? Yes, sir. We do. Thank you. Mr. I've Sheriff, I've, I've I've I believe the sheriff, do you want to, is yeah. something you want to speak to? No, I thought we had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Bennett has a question. Yeah, you know, what stage or phase are these drawings that we're getting ready to uh, vote on? Well, I think it's the, the phase to where uh, they start drilling down, and from this point on, it's it's more exact. So. Was so it final construction drawings? Excuse me? Final construction drawings? Beginning the final, yes. They're about 50%, right? Yeah, beginning the final, which is a pretty long, drawn-out process to start with. Okay, uh, thank yes. you. And yes. will we get an opportunity to review those? Yes. Yes. We uh, actually uh, traveled Friday with the jail administrator and the architect and the construction manager, the builder, uh, we went to two or three places in Alabama, two places in Georgia, uh, reviewing and looking at a facility or two, and then also went to construction uh, places that actually make some of the products. So we're trying to drill down and make sure we're uh, being diligent to, to get what we need and make sure we're getting the right pricing. So we're working toward that. Commissioner Donatio. What's the timeline on when the drawings are going to be complete? When are we, th when are we thinking? Well, I, I, I think the drawings is going to be stretched out for the next probably eight months, but we're still hoping the timeline, providing the commission uh, approves the bond in a month or two, uh, we still should be breaking ground this fall. 
and that's that's the goal for us. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, Mr. Neighbors. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You got Take a question back here. One back to back. Yeah. Oops. I'm sorry, right. Commissioner, Commissioner Dunn. Okay, I guess my question is, because right now steel prices are up, they're expected to drop pretty pretty steadily over the summer months. So will we be able to take advantage of that or will we be quoted at today's rate? Well, so, so one of the main construction costs that we're finding, that the main construction cost that is so pricey right now is steel. So we're looking at other options. Uh, currently, if you ask me today, we like the other options better anyway. So we're still we're still looking at all that. But yeah, they say that unlike 2008 and nine when still went up like this, they yeah. said they really expect once everybody ramps up production over the summer for the prices to really drop pretty quickly. Yeah, we're we are uh, when we traveled Friday, we went to two steel places. They both told us that they did not expect the price to drop. However, they expected to start meeting demand better. Right now, they can't meet the demand. So, uh, but as far as the price drop, uh, they're not expecting one for quite some time due to the increase in uh, what people are needing. So, thank you. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Neighbors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take your handsets. If you favor the motion, vote yes. If you do not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. And it will stop you right there. All right, Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Mr. Randolph. Yes. Mr. Christopher. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. All right, all votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right. Chairman, I have all 24 voting yes, zero, no, and the roll is called. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Neighbors. Uh, no report of special committees. We'll move on to C, resolutions. There are no resolutions, Mr. Chairman. And no election of notaries. I bet there's some of them. Notary. Uh, yes. Okay, notaries. Here we go. Christopher Anderson, Joanna R. Blandsetter, Brittany Brinkley, Asa Costello, Amy L. Dyer, Matthew Furclean, Christy Garrett, Samantha Garrett, Daniel Huffines, Colin Long, Sharon McNeil, Jennifer Murphy, Ellen Noose, Jennifer Phipps, Cannon Pogue, Jordan Reeder, Jacob Harlow Reeves, Lisa Russell, Sarah Shaw, Gina Shockley, and last, Deborah Wittenberg. Motion to approve. Second. And a motion and a second. Any discussion on the notaries? Mr. Neighbors. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to, to uh, vote this always. If you take your handsets and just vote uh, yes for me there, please. So we all agree these are okay folks. who have already been approved by me. All right. Mr. Sandlin, voting on notaries. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mr. Randolph? Yes. Mr. Christopher? Yes. Chief Holmes? Oh, yes. Thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> All right. All 24 votes yes, no, zero no. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, item E is other new business, and uh, we'll recognize the cash flow. Any questions to the school on uh, uh, on the cash flow. Good job, Mark. Uh, well, item number two is to hear from our property assessors. Uh, Mr. Pierce, if you'll make your way to the mic, we'd be glad to hear from you, sir. Thank you, Chairman Atwood. Thank you for letting me be in front of you guys. We're in an appraisal year, obviously, for our county, and just wanted you to 
uh, know what we know about reappraisal, how we get there, uh, when, when and how we get there. So uh, change, and the reason being that we'll do it now is change notices and value go out the 23rd, which is Friday. So people start getting those notices. Uh, in, any change in value, which I think we're going to send out about 36,000. So I want you to have those answers. And uh, if you have answers or if you have uh, questions asked of you, you'll have that. So uh, just had a PowerPoint really I have to take Kate Drake credit for all the PowerPoint, CTAS, uh, Gabe Looney, which is a consultant for the Sixers, has actually helped create this. So he did a lot of the work. Uh, there's just the statute that uh, shows that this is a mandated thing that the county does. It's a four, five, or six year cycle. Our county's always been on a five year cycle that I know of. Most of the counties in the state are on a five year. Uh, even the ones that are not are converting over to it. Uh, it is a continual process, not a one year event. Uh, we work on reappraisal every year, every day. Uh, you can see is the maintenance of records. Uh, we do a visual review uh, four years leading up to this. About 10,000 parcels are reviewed each year. Uh, we had new construction, uh, the mapping. So we're always, every day, we have to verify all the sales, which are using the sales package to analyze at the end. Uh, so, and they're just, it all builds up to adjusting these values back to market value. Um, the purpose of it is to adjust property values to Kirkman current market value. As we know, the real estate market, housing market uh, has, has has gone up in the last few years. It stores equity. Uh, the viability of property tax depends on accuracy of our appraisals, and that's that's very important to us. Uh, although reappraisal is not designed to create a windfall, they are designed to create uh, equity and get back to that market value. Um, and this is our goals that we set forth was accuracy, uniformity, equity, and reliability. Those are all important to us. Uh, the reliability so that we have good appraisals. Uh, one thing we have to uh, do is be able to defend these numbers because we will have appeals. Uh, most appeals come in a commercial appeals, but we need to be able to defend those numbers also. Um, our responsibility, we're, we're tasked to do this, but uh, as we talked earlier, the in a previous meeting, when you all approved the, the next plan, the DPA, Department of Property Assessment for Comptroller's Office, they assist us and they monitor us during this process. Uh, th these are things that uh, we have to look at, and this is our responsibility to kind of follow the standards. There's standards all the way through our process. Uh, another one you see on there, appeal defense, is, is, is all, all on us. Uh, of course, that appeal first process is our County Board of Equalization. We sit on a roll with them that we uh, give them guidance, uh, assistance, and that's it. They're, they're autonomous board voted on by you. Um, and, and just how the prop, how these values are developed, there's analysis done is the first part of starting this. Uh, the base rates for houses or any kind of structure uh, or analysis is done early on, and there's two years of sales back is how that's developed. You may have some properties that, that uh, or not don't have a lot of sales like a hotel in Putnam County you don't have a lot of sales if, if rarely ever sale so then you look at uh, Marshall and Swift is a very well-known uh, appraisal publication used nationally at least maybe internationally they develop rates based on your region that you live in of the country what it costs to build in, in any structure that you can come up with so those are used uh, and, and really the state has a lot of play in that we use an appraisal system as is given to us, is, is owned by the state of Tennessee, basically. But they, they do this analysis with us, with their approval, load this information to base rates in our in our system. Uh, this time, too, you, the certified tax rate will be something that uh, we will calculate or the state will calculate for us, give to us, and we will give to the budget committee, give to you, give to any of the taxing jurisdictions, the cities. Uh, this basically says it'll, it'll generate the same property tax revenue for the jurisdiction as the previous year. Uh, again, if the, you know, if the certified, you said the TCAs were mentioned, if the certified rate is, it, is, uh, a, a, is you go above it, then there's certain things, requirements, the Comptroller's Office law set forth that you follow. Um, the factors that we saw facing real estate values, as, as you know, if you watch real estate here, uh, values have gone up. Uh, the low interest rates we found, the high lumber cost. Lumber is quite a bit higher than, than it was in the previous years. Each year seems like it's increasing. Uh, increased sales activity. Uh, talking with uh, some realtors, 
uh, the living, limited inventory, and we're having a lot of out-state buyers coming here now, um, which which all has really probably driven the cost of houses or any of the properties up. Um, here we get kind of that uh, Gabe did a analysis or, or a, a uh, graphic of uh, the seesaw or the certified rate. The assessed value goes up, certified rate comes down. There's some years that assessed value could go down if you had a bad uh, you, several years of economy as far as the uh, real estate market, the certified tax rate could go up during that time period. Here's the appeal process, which is very important. Uh, county board meets in the month of June. Um, they hear cases by case basis. I would say last time we probably had about 400 appeals the last reappraisal. Um, just never know how many you're going to have. It probably depends on uh, the amount of, of percentage some of the properties went up and things like that. Uh, if they're not satisfied with, with that appeal, they can go to the State Board of Equalization. Uh, there's Assessment Appeals Commission, and there's Chantry Court. So there's several levels of appeals if anybody, did. we can't come to an agreement. What happens is April 23rd, we will mail out, the state will actually mails them out uh, for us, mails out all the changes in value. Then that time, they can, the property owners can start calling in, emailing, um, ask questions. We can have an informal hearing. We can review some of these, do some more analysis on our properties. And then if, if we can't come to something, some kind of agreement that both parties uh, can live with, then we'll make them appointment for county board to see, uh, have, have a time that they can come appeal their property to county board. And uh, they will be pretty active this year. They've not been very active last several years, but they will be pretty active probably this year. They are typically in a reappraisal year. Uh, I'll answer any questions you've got, or if y'all want to dig in to some deep questions and you can catch me after the meeting or you can call me or come by the office or whichever one y'all want to do. I just want, I want to be transparent with you. I want y'all to have the same information and know how and where we get there. Yes, ma'am. So do you have a, a percentage amount of those who are successful in getting their reappraisal overturned or lowered? No, not, not no. Um, it's probably going to depend. It depends on the county board, obviously, and the, and what decisions they make. Uh, you know, they they're a standalone board. We assist them there. In fact, since the last reappraisal, I've learned that was the first reappraisal I've been through. We've started with our county attorney helps us. CTAS has helped us. We start doing training with them to look at when the tax agents come in. They're pretty schooled. There's someone that. They may have an appraisal done or income expense for commercial report, uh, properties. So we have started doing a lot of training with them to say, this is what a good appraisal looks like. These are what questions to ask. Um, and sometimes those numbers, I mean, and, and they'll come in with a number. They, they want to have it lowered too. Yes, I, tax agents do, uh, but I don't have a percentage. It just depends on that board and whatever they vote. I would expect you'll have a lot of them this year. People who don't realize what property values have done. Yeah, I anticipate, we anticipate a lot. Uh, the commercial, uh, we've actually started, I think will help us. Uh, County Attorney Jeff Jones, I've been working with a group of uh, two MAI appraisers that uh, will help us a little assistance. The state provides assistance for us in that, but uh, we, our county is getting big enough almost that we, we need something, somebody with some broad experience and have a great expertise. We pulled them in and they've helped a small amount on some appeals already. We think it'll help once it starts the appeal process uh, that know we have two EMAI appraisers that are working with the sum. They've asked you to create a checklist for us to ask for certain documents if a commercial pro uh, property wants to be appealed. Yes, sir. One quick question is, um, because we're going to get questions from this, uh, on this from our constituents. Sure. Is there an upper limit of an adjustment that can be made in one assessment. In other words, you had somebody who paid $90,000 for their house five years ago, and because something went in next door, like a new school, or they found gold next door, suddenly mm -hmm. that, that property is now worth, I don't know, half a million, and they're priced out due to taxes. Is there an upper limit each year that, that it can go, or is it just a flat appraisal? I'm asking about this. It's just appraisal. And usually one thing won't affect it. It takes some, it takes data. It takes, it would take some years of sales to show that it's, it's going up in that area. Uh, if it, I don't know if it helps answer your question or not, but it, it would take something to show. It would take some sales in the area. And this is all based off sales. Oh, sure. No, I understand that. Yeah. I was wondering. Yeah, there... so uh, yeah. It, it would take something 
if they add on to it, remodel it, something like that would change it. Uh, but nothing, there's no cap, there's no anything like that. Uh, uh, and these, these really are, are appraisal are based on a few things. It's the square foot of the, the building, the structure of the house, the year is built, and the quality. Those three things really compute to a, because the base rates are entered in our, our system. But even if there are no changes at all, Sam, Sam. just as Commissioner Duncan was asking, the property values in Putnam County have increased tremendously over the last few years. Exactly. That's what I was wondering is, let's see, yeah, again, you have somebody whose house was $90,000 and now it's suddenly $175,000. Um, It'd be more there, like $190,000. Well, well, probably. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the realtor, ma'am. Um, you know, is there, there's, so there's no, like, upper cap. So, you know. I just it's just based on a fair market appraisal. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Curious. Does the does this change anything for the green belt? Well, no. The green belt properties also can change through the state. But that percentage doesn't change. Percentage. By, by percentage of the uh, twenty-five value. percent uh, value. The value. Yeah, the, I know the value is going to change, but that yeah. percentage. Assessment. Or, You're talking about the assessment. assessment value. No, no, no. Those those are set by a state legislators, so those will remain in place until they do something with if they were to change those. Y'all got more questions? You want to see me afterward, or you want to call me at the office? You want my cell phone number? We'll be glad to talk about any of those. You have questions that somebody had your constituents have? We'll be glad to you call, and we'll, we'll try to answer them. Okay. Mr. Pierce, thank you very much. Thank we you appreciate you being here, and uh, also your report. I think Mr. Porter, uh, Mayor Porter, wants to address. Us. I handed you out. It's it's April already, and I handed you out uh, our revenues. Uh, and report that I try to do and keep you uh, apprised from this point forward uh, as to how we're uh, doing revenue wise. Uh, just remember when you look at these, some of the revenues don't come in monthly. They may come in semi-monthly, they may come in quarterly, or they may only come in one time a year. So just because you look at something and, and say, uh, oh wow, the business tax is only 69%, well May and June are big months for oh, business tax. So. Uh, it'll be uh, it's a barnstorm. Already. It'll be coming up. Uh, that'll be a lot of revenue coming in uh, at the end of, of May and June. Uh, what I did is I gave you what we budgeted, how much we received, and the percentage of that uh, that's been collected. Uh, the very top one is a very good telling tale, or 100% already on our property taxes. I did a very good job on collections this year. Uh, trustee's office did. Uh, and you can just walk down through these. If you have questions, you can uh, you can call me or or talk to me afterwards, and I'll try to uh, I'll try to answer them. One thing that uh, kind of a summary, and I don't want to keep you too long. We budgeted thirty eight point five million dollars in county general as our um, total collections uh, for the year. As you can see, we've already collected thirty five million one hundred sixty seven thousand. Just remember, 2.5 million of that was from the tornado uh, FEMA funds that came back. We had to pay them out in the beginning, and they reimbursed us 87 half percent of what we spent coming back. So, deduct that from it, it's actually about 32.6 million. As it looks right now in County General, we should collect about what we budgeted. I don't see it be a being a big windfall year in County General. Uh, one reason is because the court system shut down. Uh, state Supreme Court, is that right, Sheriff? Uh, shut all the courts down statewide. So when you have those shut down, uh, the fees aren't coming in on those. Uh, and it affects more than just the court system. There's all kinds of fees in County General that it affects. It affects the Sheriff's Department. It affects the jail. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of different lost revenue there from it being shut down. Now, how fast will that come back in? I don't know. And, and But we're looking at about $750,000 less in revenue coming from those because of the short because of the court system is shut down due to covid one thing we will be able to do is the stimulus money that i'll talk about in just a minute we would be able to use that to put back in to the county general fund to take the place of that revenue loss so that would be a good thing coming up also our interest revenue is going to be about a half a million less than what it normally is uh, back last year when covid hit short-term interest rates hit rock bottom. Uh, we're not bringing in a lot of money on our cash that we have sitting in the fund balances right now, so it's going to be less. 
but we have some good things happening. Uh, the register of deeds, county clerk, EMS, there's a whole bunch of the, uh, the fees that are coming in are more, they're collecting more than what they were budgeted to for this year. So uh, that will help bring it up. So I think we'll be at about a status quo uh, for this year as it's looking right now. We've been talking about bonds and if you have any questions over the revenue, make sure you get with me and I'll be happy to answer them. We've been talking about bonds and so I want to bring you an update on it. You have a schedule that I handed out of our bonds. Currently, we have about $107 million in bonds, about 126.7, and when it includes the interest, we pay out about $13.5 million each year in bonds all the way through year 2026. I'm going to show you a graph in just a second that will uh, that will give you a better idea of that. Uh, this does not include the $2.1 million that we just did on a short-term uh, loan to buy the land for the jail expansion that will be rolled into the jail bond once we do that. You've been asking about how much capacity we have bonded. A very conservative estimate is about 95 million that we could bond right now if we needed to. Uh, sales tax has been setting a record uh, going over the past several months that we didn't expect. A lot of that's probably due to the stimulus money that's been coming down from the federal government. You had people didn't take vacations. They were renovating their homes. They were spending money here locally. I just don't know about budgeting that in the future as to whether that lasts or not. We're growing, but uh, there's a lot of sales tax been setting records. So I'm not sure how long that lasts, uh, if you keep, can keep that up. Uh, we're looking at about 65000 per million dollars of debt right now that it would cost you to to go out. So if you borrowed $100 million, you're looking at about $6.5 million per year to pay for that bond over a 20 year period. Uh, interest rates have gone up about a half of a point over the last few months. They've kind of leveled off right now. Not sure what they'll do in the future, but uh, we'll just have to watch that and see. The one thing I'd like to do is as we move forward is don't miss that low interest rate window. Uh, if we're going to do the addition to the jail and build a new school, uh, that we're headed towards that at some point we need to do that pretty soon and get locked in. This is a graph that I did. You hope it'll help some. But 2021 is the year that we're currently in, our budget year, and we have paid that bond payment. Uh, might be in the process of completing it in April. But uh, so look in 2022 going forward, we've got about three years of that 13 and a half million uh, bond payments that we have to make. And then we start dropping off in 2025. It drops off to 13 million and then starts really dropping off after that period. So if we can get to that 2026 period, uh, you're going to really open your bonding capacity back up. And as you notice in 2027, uh, probably have at least another hundred million dollars capacity in our bonding. Uh, once we get to that point, I uh, used to have to remember in past years, uh, before they changed the law, they were backloading the debt that we had, uh, that's not allowed anymore. So our bond payments are equal over the years as you go forward on any future debts you have. So I thought that might give you an idea of what our bonding capacity looks like uh, going forward. We have about, uh, in, coming up in the American Rescue Plan, the stimulus money that's coming up. I want to give you an update on it. They have set the amount that we're going to be getting coming to the county. Uh, this is to the county. This does not include schools or the city governments. We're going to get about $15.5 million over the next two years. We're going to be getting our first payment of $7.75 million this coming month in May. Uh, what we found out, we're waiting for more information, is the expenditures that we're going to be able to expend this money on is going to be very limited. So far, they've told us water projects, sewer projects, broadband, internet, infrastructure, we can reduce, we can pay back reduction in revenue. So where we lost money on the court system being shut down, we can use some of this money to make up for those that loss in revenue. And then we can provide premium pay to our county employees or essential workers that work during the COVID. Uh, school teachers, I think Mark Cal did a, an incentive to them, paid them a, a bonus. I know the CD has done that. That can be something that we can look at our county employees. Because I have to tell you, and, and some of you, Tracy, you're a county commissioner, but you're on the front lines every day keeping the county code's office open. All of our county offices stayed open uh, most of the time. There was a short period of time, over a week or two there, that we were uh, doing appointments only, but the workers were still there. EMS, law enforcement, fire, 
they were out on the job every day risking their life and their family's health uh, to continue to do that job. So I think that's something that we need to look at as this money comes down from the federal government. And this will be a part of the budget process as we go forward. Uh, we're getting more details coming down. Hopefully uh, we'll know more as we go forward. My goal is, as we put this money into an account, until we get more details on what we're going to do, we won't spend it until we know exactly uh, what we can spend it on. Because anything we spend it on, if the feds was to say, well, you couldn't have spent it on that, we have to pay it back. That's part of the bill. So we want to make sure we get more details. It's a very short time frame to spend this on. December 31st of 2024, all the money has to be spent. Or if we don't, we give it back. Uh, so basically got three and a half years on this first half to start looking at. Uh, I've heard, you know, we've got 700 homes in the county that don't have water, availability to public water. Maybe an opportunity to work with the utility districts and, and extend some of those water lines. Uh, we got a good portion of the county that doesn't have access to good broadband internet. Maybe a, a, an opportunity to partner with one of the internet providers to extend the fiber to the home or some of the, the internet expansion into the county. Uh, we want to look at some of those projects, what's going to be out there available that we can do. And finally, as, as I close a couple of things, I sent you emails each month on the building boom that we've got going on in Putnam County, and this continues to amaze me as we go forward. You know, when I started keeping data back in January 2015, when I came into office, uh, we've had almost 2,000 permits for over $253 million in that uh, five year, a little bit over five year time frame. We've had 1,116 new single family homes permitted in Putnam County, which is, is a huge number. Wow. And in March, we set a record with permits, even with building costs being at probably an all time high, I would guess, uh, with lumber and, and all the kind of things that are that go into a home. Uh, it, it continues to amaze me that we continue to see that many homes built uh, with prices being that high. Uh, this number that I give you each month does not include the cities. So when you start looking at Baxter as a construction going on at 56 and 70, where they're building about 80 new homes on that property, they've got a couple others that are looking at 60 or 80 more new homes going on those properties. So it's not it's not really in just one place. It's spread out over the entire county. We're seeing a bill from Buffalo Valley to Cumberland Cove. I want to give you some stats. I saw this article and I thought this was pretty good. U-Haul keeps up with you rent trailers or moving vans and where they end up at. Not where they originated at, but where they end up at. 2020, you want to guess where they ended up at? Number one state in the United States was Tennessee. And I don't know that that's happened before. It's always been Texas or Florida. They kind of uh, divvy back towards the forwards for first and second. Uh, I copied that last section there that says East and Central Tennessee are enjoying the biggest gains in U-Haul arrivals. The top growth cities include, look at those cities. And I capitalized one of them they included in the article. Cookville is one of those cities that they included of where they're seeing a lot of, of folks traveling to. Uh, with all we have going on right now, there are people that are moving here every day. They're coming from California and Washington and Oregon and New York and Colorado and Illinois. Uh, they're moving here. Adam, you see it in the in your job with the new houses and this construction. They're selling their homes in those states. They're buying them for probably half of what they sold it for, and they're pocketing the rest of the money. I think they got a great deal. And so there are a lot of folks that are moving here with this boom. Housing market, Daryl and Kathy, y'all see on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I talk to people that are selling their homes, and the people are buying them sight unseen, except for the pictures they see on the internet. I've never seen that before. Maybe you have, but that's that's on. No, I mean it was rare you saw it before, but now it's pretty common practice. And we're also seeing homes being put on the market, as you're telling me, and within 24 hours you got 10 to 12 offers. And they wind up selling the house for more than they ought. They had it priced at. Uh, have you ever seen the housing market as hot as it is right now in Putnam County? Never. never. Twenty-five never. years real estate. Never. This so crazy. I'm telling you all this to make you be prepared. We've been talking about this for the last two or three years about the growth in Putnam County and how that brought in all those new businesses and all those new jobs and how when you have that happening, you're going to see people moving here. 
We never dreamed that there would be a pandemic and all the things that's happened that's also causing people to move here. Uh, but when you start seeing the strain on county services, it's already started. Uh, we got 23% the volume up on our solid waste department in Garvey. Uh, EMS volumes up 7.2% already this year compared to last year. Sheriff's talking about how their calls are up already compared to last year. There, we're going to see that on our county services coming up. Well, we're already seeing it. And it's going to continue to get worse as more and more people move here. So I'm just telling you that to uh, be prepared uh, as we go forth. You're going to have to do some things, uh, jail addition, new school, uh, expanding some of our services. So I just want to make sure that y'all are aware and be thinking about that as we go forward uh, with the county budget and with future county budgets and things we're going to do in our county. This is just kind of a transparency thing I wanted to give you, give you and give you an update. Uh, be a lot more coming as we move through budget. But if you got any questions, I'll answer them now. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to point at them? Or you yeah, want... you're in charge. Mr. Bennett? Yes, we have about 95 million capacity on uh, capital projects coming up. How are we going to balance that between the school and the jail? Are we going to look at them at the same time? Uh, are we going to give one preference over the other? That'll be up to the commission. Uh, I think the sheriff's looking at the next 30 to 60 days, coming back to you with a price on the jail. And I think the school system's working with our architects to come back with you a price during the budget also. So. So we'll, we'll be able to look at both of them before we make a decision on one of them. I would think so, yes. Okay. I think that would be good. Thank you. And remember, you may look at our revenues and our budget when we get there and say, well, Randy, I think that 95 is low. I think we can do 100 or 105. I'm giving you my conservative approach that, uh, that keeps us some padding there in case we had a bad year and we still be able to pay our bonds. Randy, you mentioned uh, the water district. Have mm -hmm. you had any conversation with them about the additional money they think they might get through this program? Not yet, uh, Commissioner Martin. We just, this has been kind of dribbling out with information and until we get the final thing in the next 30 days or so, I was gonna wait I until hope, the end. I hope we can push to get some to expand that because again, that gives us the ability to grow. No water, probably won't go there. Absolutely. We don't have sewers, so we're going to kind of going to be limited to what we can do with some of this money, but uh, I'll bring you back all the possibilities. So I think I missed somebody. Mr. Ford. I was just sitting here thinking when you were talking about the positive things that were going on and we'd had so much negative from the storm and things blew away and 80 new houses coming in, it's great. But I, I thought I need to report. We've been busy on the beer board here lately with new places coming in or stores opening up. But I, last Thursday night, we done two beer board permits, and one of them was Echo Valley Market. The rebuilding. And, and I figured just a while that but they're about ready to open up down there, and that store was completely blown away. So that'll put them back on the taxes again, plus the money from the beer sales. So that's, that's a, one positive thing. It is. We've got a lot of positives going on, and that is a positive. That Echo Valley Market... I can remember going there 40 years ago. Uh, I used to live down that direction. That was my main stop every morning, every evening when I left the ambulance service or going to work. That's an icon in that community, and we're glad they built back. They put a lot of money back into that store, and it's going to be nice. And I was going to tell the commission, if you're, you're down there, stop in, get a coat from those guys. They're really, really nice, and they're really uh, county-wise. They've got several stores here in, in Putnam County. Uh, brothers and everyone, but if you down that way, stop in, say hello to those guys, buy a coat from them, support them, because they're supporting us. Local business. Jordan. Appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate those comments, too, about U-Haul. Uh, I hadn't seen those, I think, on the radio. Uh, those have been mentioned as well, too, in Nashville, so those are definitely some uh, good uh, observations. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I do want to say that that resolution that we killed or tabled earlier today we are the only county that has not approved of that resolution out of all those that were mentioned. I just wanted to bring that up. Like I said, I don't want to bring a, a beat a dead horse, but I did want to bring that up. Mayor. Any other questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you. If you have any, get with me, okay? Thank you, Mayor. All right, announcements and statements. Yeah. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, I've got one. 
announcement? I think he was first. Joe? No, I oh. just, I wanted to mention, I'm with Jordan. I am, I want everyone to know, especially in the 10th district, I am definitely not in agreement in what happened this evening on the removal from the agenda on the Second Amendment resolution. Thank you. Okay, I just want to make a public service announcement uh, that's coming up, um, an event. Uh, Tennessee Freedom Force, which is a local constitutional group, is hosting a, uh, and they actually help with the All Good School uh, with keeping of the uh, Redskins name. They worked with the school board and uh, put a lot of information together. And the group that was recognized by this was NAGA, the Native American Guardian Association. They're coming to All Good, Cookville area. Uh, on April 30th, which is next Friday night, and having a meet and greet at Southern Hills Golf Course, a barbecue dinner. We do have some tickets that are available to the left. There's a limited to 250 due to CDC guidelines, although they are $15 a piece. Uh, there are from 13 different Native cultures that are coming here to this area, and this is going to be their annual convention here. They're coming here, and it's going to be held... Uh, they, uh, the meet and greet is uh, Friday night, the 30th, and then the next day, Saturday morning, uh, at the All Good Sportsplex, it's going to be called Preserve Our Heritage Day at 10 a.m., and we are going to invite everyone out, and media, we want to invite all you guys to come out and be a part of it as well, Jim, Mr. Stone, uh, Ms. Price, we want all of you to be a, uh, be a part of that uh, for, uh, for the Preserve Our Heritage Day with the Native American Guardian Association coming to town. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Rogers, come forward. While, while he's coming forward, can I say something? <laughs> I, on, on a real positive note to end tonight, uh, outside of what we're fixing to do, I just want to say a, a special thank you to to some employees. Uh, we have we have wonderful county employees all, all across this whole entire county. Thank you to, to the IT team that has come and, and set all this up every month and got us all going thank you ronnie these guys have, have just been a blessing to help me and we, we, when we're displaced and doing what we're doing but i just want to say great big thank you to, to the entire it team for everything that they've done to help us it, it, when you're yeah you want to give them a hand that'd be great. now when you're when you're in a not in the courthouse and you're in a standalone building like we are at the county clerk's office and and uh, i mean you can I, I i have the busiest office in the county and and we see all these folks i i, I appreciate the office looking nice for for putnam county people and, and i just want to say a thank you tonight terry randolph has left i don't want to say thank you to terry but terry got gone but thank you terry <laughs> i want to say a great big thank you to, to john ross alberson uh, he and the whole PNR team came and just cleaned the front of that of our building up, put down some rock and and some shrubs, made us look so good. And uh, boy, John Ross, I just want to say thank you tonight, to all your team, Mayor Porter got got me all fixed up there, made made that the county clerk's office look so good. And then can I also say thank you, Sheriff Ferris, because every week his uh, his road crew comes and they mow the grass and trim and make it look good. I, I when you can when you take pride in your building and and you look good, it makes you feel good and and want to do good for all the citizens of Putnam County. So I just take a moment and say thanks, IT team. Thank you, John Ross. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, all of you folks who who uh, who make us look good every day. You, you're you're the best, and I appreciate it so very much. Thank you. So this one's on me. Uh, Ben Rogers served as your chairman, and we normally give a plaque to the chairman as he comes off. And due to the COVID and the way we were uh, on conference calls and everything, and I had this plaque for Ben, and we should have already done it, and I kept forgetting to bring it, and my fault, but we wanted to recognize uh, Commissioner Rogers for his uh, job as chairman for those two years, and want to give him a plaque. And it has been our uh, custom to do this. I've uh, been served well for two years. I'm grateful, and I know you are as well, and we just want to say that publicly to you, Ben, and the plaque reads as such. Uh, 
Putnam County, Tennessee, Ben Rogers. An appreciation for your leadership as chairman of the Putnam County Commission 2018 through 2020. Ben, thank you very kindly. Thank you all. We had a tough time with COVID, but if it wasn't for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't get through it. I couldn't do my job as chairman, and if it wasn't for you, I can't do what I do. So thank you all. This goes to you. I appreciate you. I'll just stand and finish here. Any other announcements? Let me make one you may or may not be aware of. Um, Commissioner Sandlin had some major surgery last week. Uh, the reason he's not here tonight, he did get to come home, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, but it was major surgery. And he is healing, but I'm satisfied he'd appreciate uh, our consideration, our prayers, and remembering him uh, as he heals. Uh, so uh, be sure uh, if you get a chance maybe to even call, ask about him. Uh, he's doing okay. As you heard tonight, he was able to be with us, and I'm thankful for that. So, any other comments? Budget committee after budget uh, committee after this meeting? Just to elect officers. All right. And we have a budget committee meeting uh, immediately after this, this meeting. Any other comments? Guys, thanks a lot. We had a great meeting Tuesday night with the school. Uh, a lot of things coming up going to be in the near future. So, uh, Button your chin straps and fashion your seatbelts. Uh, here it comes. We are just.